Hello, welcome back. We're now going to move from the general idea of simplifying expressions that have imaginary numbers to having expressions where we have to add or subtract or even multiply and divide imaginary numbers. That's what we're going to work on here. So it's easiest to do these kinds of things just by showing you examples rather than just trying to explain it. So let's do one. Let's say we have negative 25, and we'll take the square root of this, and we're going to add to that the square root of negative 36. So the first thing we do is we always tackle the radicals first. Now we know what the square root of 25 is, and we know what the square root of 36 is. So this is going to evaluate to 5 times i because we have that negative in there. So that gets evaluated as a square root there and give you 5i. And this one is going to give you uh, 6i for the same reason. The square root of this is 6, the square root of the negative 1 is i. Now when you're to this step, you're adding two imaginary numbers together, and my rule of thumb is exactly the same as what we've done for any kind of expression. You can only add imaginary numbers together if they both have an i. If, if one of them has an i and one of them doesn't, then you can't add them. Like you can't add 2 plus 5i. You, I mean, you can't combine them into some simpler thing. You just can't add them. So just like variables, everything has to match. i and i match, so of course we can add that, and we'll get 11 times i. And that's the final answer. All right, what if we have negative uh, 25, take the square root of this, and we're going to multiply it now by negative uh, 36. So we have a similar deal, except instead of the addition, we're going to multiply. So this, we already know, evaluates to 5 times i. And this, we already know, evolves, evaluates to 6 times i. Same sort of deal with multiplication. You treat it exactly as you've done any uh, multiplication with variables. So if this were 5x times 6x, you would say it's 30x squared. Well, in this case, it's not an x. You say it's 30i squared, because i times i. But now you know that i squared is always equal to negative 1. So you just say that this is equal to negative 1, and so the answer is negative 30. The answer is negative 30. All right? Uh, these are kind of fun problems. We're just going to cruise through them. What if we have uh, 3 times the square root of negative 2 minus uh, the square root of negative 50? Now here we have to work a little harder because this square root has a larger uh, number inside. So let's go off to the side and figure out what the factor tree for 50 looks like. And it's going to be, let's say, 5 times 10, and 10 is 5 times 2. And of course you see the, pa the uh, pair that we have right here. So for the first one here, uh, the negative 2, we still have a 3 times whatever's inside here. The square root of negative 2 is going to be i times the square root of 2. Why? Because the square root of the negative 1 comes out as an i, and the square root of 2 is left over. Then this, we have a subtraction here, and the square root of negative 50 means we have an i that comes out because of the square root of negative 1, but the actual square root is 5 times the square root of 2. Now typically the way we write it is as follows. 3 times this quantity, we multiply what's on the outside of the radical, 3i times the square root of 2. And then here we have, we don't write it as i5, typically we write it as 5 times i times the square root of 2. Now remember back to radicals, you can only add or subtract radicals when you have exactly the same radical. In this case we do, we have a matching thing. So we can add or subtract what's in front. And again, we can only add or subtract these if we have both have an i, and they do both have an i. So here it reduces to saying, what is 3 minus 5? You know that's equal to negative 2, and then you have the i coming along, and you have the square root of 2 coming along. Negative 2 times i times the square root of 2. So let's take this general problem template that we have and go over here and change this to multiplication and see what we get. So that would be 3 times the square root of negative 2 multiplied by uh, negative square root of negative 50. So we want to multiply that and see what we get. So here, same exact thing. This is going to be 3 times i square root of 2, right? Then we have, inside of here, we have a negative 1. Let's, uh, let's do it like this. Let's make, put this negative 1 in parentheses, because here we're going to have the i is going to come out. And the square root of 50, we already figured out, the square root of 50 is 5 times the square root of 2. So it's going to be 5 square root of 2 like this. Make sure you understand. The negative here just comes from what was above. Here, this comes out, square root of negative 1 is i, and then this re comes from the square root of 50 being 5 times square root of 2, and all this stuff is multiplied together. So to clean it up a little bit, I'm going to have 3 times i times square root of 2. That's going to be in the first term. Second term is negative, then I have, I'm going to flip this around to be negative 5 times i times the square root of 2. And I have to multiply these. So I multiply what's outside of the radical, negative times positive negative, 3 times 5 is 15, i times i is i squared. 
And then the square root of, the, of these guys is the square root of 2 times 2 is 4. I multiply what's under the radical. All right. And so what I'm going to have here is negative 15. But don't forget, i squared is always equal to negative 1. And the square root of 4 is 2. So I have negative times negative is positive, And then 15 times 2 is 30. So the answer is positive 30. You know, it looks difficult, but the secret to doing all of these problems is to write down every single step. Notice that I didn't skip any steps. I didn't um, try to, to make this uh, i times 5 square root of 2 and then multiply by the negative 1 all in the same step. I wrote it all down because when you solve enough of these problems like I have, you will find that you will make mistakes with imaginary numbers. And mistakes always come from trying to do too many things in one step. So write down your steps. It's not that much, guys. Write it down so you don't get the wrong answer. All right, let's, let's crank through um, a couple more. I'm going to work one, I think, over to the side here because I want to work its companion down below. What if we have uh, over here, what if I have 2 times the square root of negative 24 minus the square root of negative 54? All right, so I have to do some factor trees. I have to do some factor trees. Well, I have 24, right? So let's go do that one first, 24. What is that? That's 6 times 4. And you all know that 4 is 2 times 2. And you know that 6 is 3 times 2. So I have a nice pair. And that's orphaned left over. 54 can be written as 9 times 6. This is 3 times 2. And 9 is 3 times 3. So here's my pair here. So I have both of the square roots figured out. And so I've kind of cluttered up my space here. I apologize for that. So let's continue down here. This is going to be 2 times whatever this is. The square root of the negative part is going to give you the i. And the square root of the 24 is going to be a 2 coming out. And then what's left over is 3 times 2 is 6. That's what's left over under the radical. The minus sign comes from between there. And then this is going to evaluate from here. But the square root of the negative means I have an i. 54, a single 3 is going to come out with the square root of 6 left over underneath it. So I need to clean up these terms a little bit. 2 times 2 is 4, so it's going to be 4i square root of 6 minus, I'm going to flip this around to 3i square root of 6. And I have a square root of 6 matching, so I can subtract them. I have i's matching, so I can subtract them. What is 4 minus 3? It's just 1. So it's going to be 1i times the square root of 6. So I have i times the square root of 6. That's the final answer. So now what I want to do is take this problem right here with these numbers and sort of change it where this turns into a multiplication and just get some practice working its kind of companion there. And we've done a lot of the work already, so it'll be pretty easy. So the problem is like this. Uh, 2 times the square root of negative 24 uh, multiplied by negative square root negative 54. Okay? Like that. What do we have le left? Uh, what do we have left here? So here we have this. So we already figured this out from last time, but let's write it down again. The 24 is going to come out to be 2 times the square root of 6. So it's going to be 2 times i from this times the square root of 6, exactly as it was before. But we're going to multiply that by what we have here. But we have a negative. So I'm going to kind of like put a negative 1, I guess, here. I'll put it in parentheses because I have to evaluate this, which was 3 times the square root of 6. But I had this negative, so it's 3 times i times the square root of 6, exactly as it was before. right? But then I have that negative here, so I want to make sure I not screw that up. So this will be 4 times i times the square root of 6. Inside here, it'll be negative 3 i square root 6. OK, now I multiply the coefficients in front. 3 times 4 is 12, but it's going to be negative. So negative 12, i times i is i squared. Don't forget that. And then I'm going to have the square root of 6 times 6, which is 36. All right, so I'm going to have the negative 12. i squared is always equal to negative 1. Square root of 6 or 36 is 6. And I can just now multiply. I'm going to get positive. And what I'm going to get is 12 times 6 is 72. So positive 72 is the final answer. So obviously, I mean, these problems are mostly there to give you practice more than anything. But I mean, obviously, if you change something from a subtraction to a multiplication, you're going to get a radically different answer. Here's a real number as an answer. Here's an imaginary number as an answer when I did the subtraction, right? And a similar thing, when I did the subtraction, I got kind of an imaginary result here. But when I changed it to multiplication, I got a real result. Basically, when you multiply imaginary numbers together, you get real answers. And that's kind of something you're just going to have to get used to. Not something you have to memorize, but it is something that you'll get used to seeing. All right, we have not too much more, actually, just a few more. 
Um, but they're, they're kind of fun little short problems. What about i times the square root of 18 uh, plus the square root of negative 8? So the first thing we have to do is go off to the side and figure out what these square roots really are. We've done 18 so many times, but it's 9 times 2 and 3 times 3. And then the 8, you all know by now, is 2 times 4, 2 times 2. Here's your pair. So I just want to write them down so we're all on the same page. Here it's i times this. So it's going to be i times what's on the inside, which is, notice there's no negative number here, right? So it's not going to be an imaginary answer here, but it's going to be 3 times the square root of 2. 3 root 2. Added to that, this is going to be 2 times the square root of 2, but I have an i there, so it's going to be 2 times i times the square root of 2, because the square root of the negative makes an i come out like that. So let me clean this up a little bit. It would be 3i root 2 plus 2i root 2. Now I can add them because I have a matching square root, and I do have a matching imaginary number, so what I'm going to have is 5i is a coefficient to the square root of 2. 5i times the square root of 2. That's the final answer. All right, now let's change this addition to multiplication just to kind of get practice. What if I have i times the square root of 18? Uh, let's do it like this. Multiply by the square root of negative 8. Now we've already done the radical part, so what we have is i times, what was the square root of 18? It was 3 times the square root of 2. 3 root 2. Then over here I have the square root of negative 8, which we already figured out was 2 times i times the square root of 2. So it's 2 root 2, but then there's also an i in there. And now I have to multiply things together. So what ends up happening is you multiply the coefficients here. So 3 times 2 is 6. i times i is i squared. And then the radicals multiply. 2 times 2 is 4 goes under the radical. And so what I'm going to end up happening, having is 6. This becomes a negative 1. This becomes a 2. And now you have 12. And so you have negative 12. And that's the final answer, negative 12. All right, obviously, same sort of thing. When you add these radicals together, you got an imaginary answer. Whenever I multiply them, I got a real answer. All right, let's um, have two more, two more, which are basically cousins of one another, so they're almost the same problem. Um, what if I have i times the square root of negative 98 subtract square root of positive 98? So obviously I'm going to need to know how to take the square root of 98. So let's go over here and say 98. Well, we know that 2 times 50 is 100, so we know that 2 times 49 has to be 98, and this can be 7 times 7, and there's my pair. That's all I really need, because it's the only radical I have. So what I'm going to have here is it's going to be i, and on the inside it's going to be square root of 98 was 7 times the square root of 2, but because of this I have an i involved, so 7 times i square root of 2, right? Then I have a subtraction, and then this is going to be the exact same radical, 7 times the square root of 2. Of course, there's no i because this was not the square root of a negative number. So let's multiply with i in. So you're going to have 7, and then the i times i is i squared, square root of 2, minus 7 times the square root of 2. But this is negative 1. So 7 times negative 1, root 2, minus 7, root 2. So you're going to get negative 7, root 2, minus 7, root 2. Two. Now you have a matching radical, and you can just add the coefficient. So negative 7 minus 7, negative 14, square root 2. That's the final answer, negative 14, square root of 2. All right, final problem that we're going to have is going to be a basically an exact uh, copy of this one with multiplication. So i square root negative 98 uh, multiplied by, on the inside, negative square root 98. We have all the radicals. We know what the square root of 98 equals. Uh, so here we have i times. What do we have? Square root of negative 98. It's 7 times the square root of 2, but it's going to have an i involved. So it's 7i square root of 2. Multiplied by this is going to be negative 7 square root 2, right? Because the negative from here, 7 square root of 2, is what the radical is equal to. And so what I'm going to have is i times i is i squared. So 7i squared root 2, and let's just wrap it up like this, and then negative 7 root 2. Here this i squared is negative 1, so it's going to be negative 7 square root of 2 
times negative 7 square root 2. So you see the negative times negative gives you positive. 7 times 7 is 49 square root of 2 times 2, which is 4. So you have 49 times 2. So what do you get? 49 times 2 is 98. Just double check in my answer. You get a positive 98 for the answer. None of these are hard. I want to do enough problems with you, though, so that you get comfortable with it. What you're doing is you're basically having to remember that the square root of a negative number involves i, right? And you also have to remember that i squared is negative 1. Other than that, you treat i as a variable as far as adding like terms, as far as exponents, things like that, is basically treat it like a variable, although you know it's not a variable. You have to substitute i squared being negative 1. And so that can sometimes make the answer real, even when your problem was imaginary. So follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to continue multiplying and adding and dividing these imaginary numbers to give you more practice right now.